I'm Jeannie Kirkhope. I'm the coordinator for Catholic Committee of Appalachia. And I brought a divining rod. That was one of the, um, when I first moved here, I'm originally from Ohio, very flat, so I loved the hills. Um, but uh, when I was moving in, I needed to get a well drilled. And the guy who was referred to me, recommended to me, uh, was also um, a water witch. And he brought, uh, well, he cut this off my property. He said it's not a peach tree, but it's a beech tree, so that's close enough. <laughs> and because um, <laughs> uh, I didn't have a peach tree over there, but it, I was so amazed that uh, just the how the earth works and that that can even happen. Mm. Uh, I'd never seen anything like that, and the connection that this guy obviously had with with his home place was just um, really touched my heart. Um, and the water where he was walking around on my property was so strong underground that he couldn't control the stick, like it broke. So um, I, I was just like, can I have that stick? It was like <laughs> magical to me. So um, this has been up in my house for the last eight years. Um, but that's why I brought this. Um, I am touched by, uh, I, I live pretty far out in the sticks uh, in Rome County also. And um, I'm really touched by how close I am Rachel said something like this. Um, you're, you're so close to to nature. It's like uh, you're right on the edge between life and death at all times. Mm -hmm. It's it's so powerful to uh, you know see a, a moth get hit by a, a droplet of rain and and yeah. really struggle um, and might not make it. And then you see baby birds being born or something like. That. I mean, it's just always. And they say it's boring out here. <laughs> I mean, it's like the most alive place I've ever been in my life. So that's all I have to say. My name's Elisa, Elisa Young, and I'm from Ohio. And um, what Rose said about Larry really touched me because the things that I was fighting in my community were against power plants and underground coal mines. But when I met Larry, we struck up an immediate friendship, and he was very inspirational and very supportive. And there's a big hole in my heart where he left. Mm. Um, but when I was talking to Tanya, she talked about bringing a piece of clay. And in the process of fighting against the power plants, which eventually we won, none of the power plants were built, um, I thought about a piece of clay that had been gifted to me from my own farm. One of the groups of students that came, we had students that came over from all over and people that came on tours. Um, one of our villages, AEP, bought out and depopulated and there's just a lot of environmental devastation there. And so for people who haven't seen issues on coal, we would take them and walk them through that and also show them the mountaintop removal, which was being burned in our power plants. Mm -hmm. And one of the groups of students that came, came back. And they actually had given up their college careers after they came on the tour and had formed a nonprofit organization called Being and Doing. Mm -hmm. And the first place that they came to was my farm. And they stayed for several weeks and participated in a public hearing on a, a permit against a power plant. And there were two boys and one girl. And the girl was an artist. And uh, she was not really physically, um, I don't know, not very stalwart. And the boys were learning how to drive the tractors and were putting up fences and doing things like this. And she was really downhearted. And I said, you don't understand. You have a power. Art is a very powerful medium. If you create that image, it helps people hold that while they're working toward that goal. And I said, what I would like for you to do is to make me a painting. A painting of the landscape without the power plants and what we're working toward. But at the end of their stay, she gifted me with a picture. I didn't bring it. But it was a picture of my hands against the landscape of our power plant. Mm -hmm. And one of the power plants, there was a rainbow going over it and a windmill. That power plant actually is now in the process of being taken offline. But the other thing that Katie made me, she picked up some red clay from the land, which is what my ancestors farmed from. We were of Welsh and German ancestry, so mining and farming is in our blood. And she formed this little caricature of my friend Guy and made a little hat out of a piece of trash. And she had found a paper clip and made some glasses. The glasses have fallen off. <laughs> um, but when I think of this, I think of the land, which really is us. We farmed that piece of land for so many generations and ate the food from it and laid our bodies down in it, that we are that land. 
And so when there's pain there, I feel it. And I felt it today driving through it to come here. I now live in a very beautiful place up in Hawking Hills. If you look at a picture of light pollution, it's the only place in the state that is dark. And it's a very healing place for me to be right now. There's a huge waterfall on the property, and it's just gorgeous. But it's not home. Um, but I thought about the land, and I thought about my friend. And all of the people who are working together toward a better future. So I come here with gratitude in my heart and love. And I send you healing wishes and light. We'll get there. <laughs>